Welcome back. And we did mention, we talked a lot about uh, many things that is happening around the world at the moment. But uh, we did mention that we will be having a guest on uh, board. In fact, we're having two uh, very important people on board Rise and Shine today on the Thursday's edition of Rise and Shine. And uh, welcoming uh, both of them, I, we have with us uh, the uh, Senior Lecturer of the Department of Electronic and Telecommunication Engineering, uh, Dr. Luan Dayananda, and also we have uh, research engineer at Tilin Ambagahawat, who is joining us to talk on a very important uh, topic uh, that uh, might be very interesting to people uh, as uh, the uh, lifestyles of Sri Lankans go on. Very good morning to both of you. Uh, good morning, sir. And good Thank morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us on Rice and Shine. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of the growing trend uh, when it comes to biology, and uh, also the engineering side aspect of it. Uh, how are we looking at, uh, or what is the correct definition and the story behind? Uh, the medical, medical or clinical practice itself is not engineering or not technical, but you may have seen in recent years, medical, uh, medical field or clinical practice has increased a lot. Has increased a lot means, and has developed a lot but this development has mainly come from technology incorporated with the medical practice. So what, what actually has been developed is the te medical technology. This is the trend in the world right now. This biomedical engineering is the most de rapidly developing field of engineering right now all over the world in terms of uh, occupation or in terms of research funding this is the most uh, rapidly developing form. Uh, therefore, this uh, biomedical engineering has a very promising future in terms of medical practice as well as industry wise. All right, uh, coming to you, uh, uh, Thelina, like say, what would be the uh, benefits of uh, promoting biomedical uh, engineering in Sri Lanka? Uh, I think for that question more than myself is okay. the doctor one is the best one to <laughs> answer that question. Okay. So Tilni is uh, actually uh, doing more research on more it. research and development side. We will come right. to that little later. Now this uh, biomedical engineering can benefit Sri Lanka in mainly two, two factors, mm -hmm. two sides. One is now we have a lot of medical instruments in hospitals. but who is going to take, uh, take care of those instruments? Now, in normal practice, they should be regularly maintained. And the quality should be checked regularly. Uh, some life support device should be checked once in six months, or maybe less than that. Some other devices may be less frequently. But these, these quality assurance or safety assurance has to be done by biomedical engineers. and. Uh, and also now this government is promoting medical tourism. It's one aspect of tourism and India and Singapore doing a lot of these things. But to go for medical tourism, all the hospital has to be standardized. They have to get the standards and certification. Without biomedical engineering division or without this regular uh, instrumentation checkup, it is very difficult to get that certificate. So to go with that field, we need biomedical engineer. But more than that, Biomedical engineering is a research and development field. Now there are a lot of problems that uh, medical professionals, so doctors, get every day. These problems can be uh, solved by technology. Now, to do this, engineers and doctors should work together. And to that to happen, now there are these things are going on in other places around the world. But the problem is our problems may not be exactly same as the any other country's problem. So we have very specific problems. We have already de dealt with some of these problems. And therefore, to benefit Sri Lanka in this clinical practice, we have to develop this field in Sri Lanka as well. And also speaking, uh, how far is the trend internationally? Uh, internationally, now, if you see last uh, uh, last 10 years, last decade, research funding has increased more than 200 percent. This the statistics are from United States because it's uh, it's available freely. Has increased more than 200 percent, but in other engineering fields, the most increase is about 67 percent. So it's only biomedical engineering has increased, and 
during the economic downturn, the biomedical engineering funds were not reduced. So they were kept at the same point. So there are a lot of research. Every, every research group has something related to biomedical engineering. And it's also the support group that has uh, been that giving uh, the benefit benefits. for most of the medical sites. So yes. coming back to uh, Sharon's question, uh, like about the international, where does Sri Lanka stand in the international uh, arena with when it comes to biomedical uh, technology? Uh, in bio, when it's come to biomedical technology, we are just starting up. Actually, we didn't have a biomedical engineering undergraduate program or graduate program until this year. So now this year, University of Moratua started biomedical engineering undergraduate program with a limited number of students of course at the beginning about 10 students and this is the start now right now the practice is uh, usually other engineering graduates get employed now there is a undergraduate uh, biomedical engineering divisions in government uh, health ministry as well as provincial health ministries they hire other engineering graduates and they train them to be biomedical engineers so they can uh, do this maintenance and uh, uh, ac acquisition of equipment. But biomedical engineers can go a little beyond that. They are trained to work with medical doctors or medical professionals and they are trained to come up with solutions for these uh, medical problems. So therefore we see that this is a good time for us to start. So you will say that there is scope in it if you want to do biomedical, biomedical engineering. So I believe uh, most of the viewers out there, especially for those who are looking at the, in the of you know educating themselves in the field of uh, biomedical engineering, I think it's a valuable scope for yeah. a growing trend. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Thilina, based on your expertise on research, um, what have you noticed in the recent past uh, in the field of emerging? Yeah. yeah. The trending is most on EEG mm -hmm. actually. Uh, medical treatments and uh, ECG also medical imaging. A mm -hmm. uh, lot of research on the medical imaging, isn't it? Yeah, uh, and uh, the and on if I add on to that, mm -hmm. there are a lot of now uh, the traditional way of uh, doing uh, medical treatments sometimes can be invasive. Mm -hmm. Now, people are going for this non-invasive technologies, like instead of uh, doing operation on an open body, they are going for this laparoscopic surgery, so computer-guided or image-guided surgeries. Mm -hmm. Then there are a lot of engineers who work with doctors and who regularly go to the operating theatre in developing these technologies. Now, this culture, is, uh, we have to bring it here mm -hmm. with these big hospitals, big teaching hospital in international, they have these research facilities where they train biomedical engineers and uh, doctors for their postgraduate work together. So I, uh, I have that experience. So that is a very, very valuable ex uh, investment for the future of uh, this medical field as well. What are the benefits, uh, doctor? What are we looking at um, if, if there is, uh, you said it is the startup here. Yeah. Uh, but what are the benefits that we're looking forward in the future as well? Yeah. In national, as a national benefits, uh, if we think uh, correctly, in Sri Lanka we don't have a high tech industry. Mm. We don't have high tech industry. We're just still molding ourselves to get into it. Yes. Yeah, so as you said, we are in the like the grassroots level of grassroots. Uh, uh, no, we we don't have any high tech tech uh, industry. If we talk about, so we had what is labor intensive industries. Now it is not going to be sustained in a developed country. So as our economy goes up, uh, this labor intensive industries may not sustainable. But we need a high tech industry. When we go to high tech industry, cost is the major factor. factor. But in medical industry, that is different. Medical in industry cost come last. So there are huge, uh, there are little higher markups in products. So we can compete in medical devices uh, uh, industry. So as the leading technology university in Sri Lanka, in our department has recognized this medical device manufacturing industry as one of the high potential industries for Sri Lanka. So therefore, to initiate that, 
we wanted to start this research and development part. Now, university can do some research. We can produce some products. But uh, beyond that, some company has to come and take it beyond. So we, we advertise for that in that to stimulate this. We can't do run it alone. We stimulate it. We got uh, a collaboration with the industry partner, leading medical device uh, importer. He actually, they have industry-sponsored lab in the university right now. Our target is to first go for this import replacement. We are, we are almost done with the first product, which is made in Sri Lanka, which would be made in Sri Lanka, high quality professional medical device, which will be out within this year. So uh, if, we, if we can stimulate this industry, others will come also, because we have a good health indicators. We have close to developing uh, health indicators, which are very close to developed countries than developing countries. So then that, that has, a, that has a, uh, some kind of a backup for us to go for this device, that, that, we, that, we, that we will be very credible uh, if, we can prom uh, if we are going to promote this industry in Sri Lanka. And we have the expertise. Only thing is, we have to find investment, and we have to get other investors to invest this. And there were inquiries. They, were, they are looking for biomedical engineers as well. So that's, that's why we, we thought of starting this, a good time to start. So I think, Sharon, the call goes out to say you, that is a new line that you need to follow. Like, say, there's a lot of scope in biomedical uh, engineering. So there you go. That is a call out. You come in, join, and it's at the motor to you university and I think uh, that will bring a lot of scope with the uh, trend that is coming in and as you said there's a lot of scope into it because uh, it's, it's, we are more than a developed country we have the more, resor more resources than a developed country uh, I mean a De developing country, country yes. to compete with the developed countries yes yes of course and based on uh, research doctor now most of the people do research on to collect data to see the feedback and also to see where are we progressing yes. but uh, what are the implications do we see when it comes to biomedical engineering now uh, there are two two types of research now these are uh, now we are mainly targeting on application type of research mm -hmm. for instance i i'll i'll uh, tell you an example now in sri lanka we have a specific problem like the radiologists uh, the, the, we have lack of radiologists mm. so therefore there will be a one radiologist taking care of so many many, many hospitals mm. so he may, he usually visits visit once a week to a hospital mm. and then uh, uh, do the discuss with the surgeon and do uh, do the report and he'll come back now if a surgeon finds something that he that he's to he needs to discuss with the radiologist before the surgery he has to wait another seven days because they can't talk over the phone without the images. So this was a real problem. So with the, with the help of doctors, actually, we got to know about this problem. And we develop a program uh, which is called the Synchronized Medical Weaver, which was no, never developed anywhere else in the world, which is like a desktop sharing application. But we can't use a desktop sharing application to look at medical images. They should be accurate. They should be very clear. So this is a different approach. So we could synchronize whatever the views that uh, one radiologist get in a rural uh, remote location to another location. So whatever he draws on the picture will be available on the other side as well. So this, this kind of application, uh, the only thing is uh, we have this program. This is working perfectly fine. Doctors want to install this program and run it. But as a university, we don't have capacity to go ahead and run this. This is a business. Now, uh, in, uh, industry partners should industry. Some people should invest on that and uh, install it as a pilot project and test it. So that is that is the research that uh, the uh, the other statistical research that what what are the changes that it requires, kind of how it's going to be useful. Those things should be uh, test in a in a setup like that. So this is one one instance. Now we have I can give you. Many more examples like that we did for Sri Lankan situation because no one else in the world is going to come and do that research for us. Mm -hmm. It's our specific I think problems. We, we identify ourselves so as ourselves. to what yeah. we so want. So it has to come within uh, ourselves into, like I said, to do yeah. this. We need yeah. to do this to yeah. take it 
to the next level. Yeah, if we, if we, if we, if we continuously collaborate, now we collaborate with doctors from uh, Colombo Medical Faculty. Monterey, Monterey University doesn't have a medical faculty, so uh, we collaborate with Monterey Medical Faculty, Kalni Medical Faculty, and Jayadanupur Medical Faculty. So we, we collaborate lo with a lot of doctors. Once we go there and sit with them, we get a lot of questions that we can, we can answer with a, with a little effect than they are doing their themselves. Okay. So technology well, side. Doctor, time has come for us for <laughs> us to say our thank yous to you and also educating the public on biomedical engineering. Um, uh, uh, to all the parents out there, if you're looking for a future in medical, it's not just uh, medical that we're looking at. We have other aspects in different areas where growing areas are very important for your children. So to take a step and also study more. I believe uh, the universities would be quite a number of assistants uh, when it comes to areas like this. Thank you very much to you, Doctor. Thank, thank you very much, much thank for you. for joining us. Uh, myself, of course, I will be saying bye-bye. We'll be seeing you tomorrow. Both of us are going to be there. We're going to have a epic Friday episode is what yeah. I like and to uh, leave Obviously, it. Shannon loves Fridays because the yes. weekend is here. I'm doing a Friday <laughs> after a really long time. Let's see how All it right, goes. it's time for us to say bye-bye. Hope you enjoy this as we enjoyed presenting it to you.